I believe if you're consistently wondering what's going on on the internet, on social media, if people are uh, responding to your comments, then you cannot focus on two things at once. And when you're in a classroom, the most important thing is academic um, learning, lessons, activities, etc. When you're in a classroom, the teacher is really having a conversation, a one-on-one -on -one conversation with you. She may be asking questions. She may be asking you to have conversations with other people. So when you're having conversations with other people, you're kind of in real life. When you're on a cell phone, you're getting images every, every few seconds. And those images are consistently changing. They're rapidly changing. And I don't believe that teachers are able to rapidly change uh, what they're doing as quickly as uh, the images that occur on, on cell phones or on social media. And so I believe that compromises your attention span, right? If you're used to constantly looking at rapidly changing images, then when you get into a classroom and it takes deep focus, uh, you're not able to do that at the same rate. Or a teacher's not able to facilitate instruction at the same rate as you're receiving information when you're online and, and looking at social media. As a parent, yes, we limit cell phone usage at home um, because we understand the addictive nature of having a cell phone and we want to uh, hedge that where possible. Uh, with my older child, I give a little more freedom, um, but yeah. Ex very much excessive use because you know already like if you were if you're wearing glasses or corrective lenses and things like that like for one your art your eyes already are, are adjusting to that over over time but in that in itself can cause eye strain but even whether you wear those whether you wear corrective lenses or not like constantly looking at um at the screen can damage like the the vessels in your in the cornea in your eye as well over time, um, which uh, causes headaches. I have a lot of students coming with complaints of headaches and, you know, you're on your phone all the time, or, you know, so that can definitely be linked to it as well. The overusage of cell phones affects the child's mind because it, cell phones are specifically designed to get people addicted to them. There's, there's, you can achieve things on games that, um, release dopamine in your brain which is a very addictive chemical and so we crave that and we crave that that positive feedback that cell phones tend to give us. I, th I think boundaries should be set. I, I think um, students should use self-discipline really. I think um, I believe our kids at school are young adults and of course I'm going to set expectations right when you come on when you come on campus those cell phones need to be silent vibrate mode. We allow students to use them during lunch um, but I think in class students have to have a measure of self-discipline in order to realize that, hey, I've got to focus on my studies, I've got to focus on real life relationships. And I, I, I believe that the boundaries that should be set truly should be set by the students themselves. So that's one of the things that I really work hard at teaching. Those are the conversations that I have with students in the hallway. Um, I let them know that, you know, don't let social media and Instagram and all those good things think for you. Take some time, put your cell phone down, challenge yourself. Um, to, to, to stay disciplined and uh, just be in the real world. So boundaries should be set with by the students themselves, by the individual themselves. I believe that boundaries are also set by expectations that we have on campus. And uh, of course, once you walk into the classroom, that, automatic, that threshold is the boundary to put that cell phone up and get focused on your studies. Well, I overuse my cell phone. Um, and so just by that example, um, it they see what they see is what they do oftentimes with children um, and so I need to be better about that so the recommended average screen time according to the National Institute of Health is two hours uh, or less ideally um, parents can help to I guess, control that even students themselves like um, put 
doing things such as limiting the amount, the apps that they use most frequently, limiting the access, like maybe complete, completely delete it for a certain period of time. There's also controls um, on cell phones and family plans that where parents can limit limit like the Wi-Fi access and things like that, or um, different like implementing like family activities. Uh, so we encourage family time. Um, by having a kind of unspoken rule of no cell phones at the dinner table. And so we try our best to have dinner as a family every night. I've watched my cousins. I've been in Houston since 2000, um, and I graduated from college in 2000. But I have cousins that were born in like 98 and 2001 in Chicago and Gary and all over, and so I've been able to watch them grow. I've been able to watch them um, graduate from high school. So we communicate by, by connecting with other people, but I believe that technology is a great thing. I think they can be used. I think they're powerful tools that connect the universe, right? We have to use them with, with, with a grain of salt. Just because you have a cell phone and you can connect with people all over the world at any time does not mean that you need to use every waking moment. Um, connecting yourself to people across the world. So if you, there's something that you need that needs to be researched, the teacher can point can say to you, hey, everybody, you know, let's jump on your cell phone, let's research this. If there's a fam if there's um, family pictures that you want to share, if there's a specific assignment that you want to uh, share with your class, I think that those are great tools. If there's some research, if there's something that you need to know very quickly, if you need to map something out and find out where something is, it's a powerful tool to use, you know? there still have to be some safety guards in place.